Hey everyone, in the news, Sir Michael Caine turned 90 and not a lot of people know that. And I received an email asking me to spell maps backwards, but it turned out to be spam. But of course the big story this week was the collapse of the US financial firm Silicon Valley Bank, which in turn has set off a chain of dominoes around the world that threatens to destroy the lifestyles of some executives who'd hoped to retire in their 50s, but whose share certificates may now as well have pictures of that Dogecoin dog on it. They could barely run a bath, let alone a business. I've seen candidates in The Apprentice make a better job at selling food than the covered market. But anyway, there's been a series of accusations about what specifically went wrong at the bank, most centering the fact that the management was obsessed with diversity rather than competence, to the extent that the board of directors only had one member on it with previous banking experience. For those of you with a technical knowledge of the markets, the entire business was essentially geared around using a short-term lending facility to cover long-term investments. And when rates went up, everything fell apart because the operation was backed by 10-year treasury bills paying less than 2%. But anyway, who was running it then? Well, mostly people who'd made political donations to the Democrats, which is why President Biden has since stepped in and guaranteed everybody's money, not just the first $250,000 that the Federal Reserve would have to cover. In this case, a 250 grand limit would only be enough to cover 3% of the deposits, such as their customer base. And make no mistake, this is one of the largest transfers of wealth from poor people to wealthy people in US history. It's up there with the time that George Lucas convinced everybody to pay $10 a time to watch Jar Jar Binks co-star not just one but three terrible movies. Harry and Meghan have all their money parked there and thus they'll be getting bailed up by working class people in a way that even King Charles would find a bit unseemly. What about the UK assets of the bank? Well, those were picked up by HSBC for the nominal cost of £1. And I believe that figure came about because it's all the money that the bank's treasurer had on him after he'd already handed over a £10 note at Starbucks on the way to the meeting. But it is a reminder that the contagion from this is global, and there are other banks making the same terrible financial decisions over the last couple of years. One of those banks is Credit Suisse, which is large enough that its collapse could do the unthinkable and actually destroy the Swiss banking system. And I find that a terrifying prospect, although it's largely because I'm a huge fan of that Swiss chocolate money you get at Christmas time. See you next week. Like these, please subscribe.